Welcome back to the Data Blitz podcast, everybody. This is the week 15 Dynasty recap. Um, I have Brendan joining me again. I don't know how to... We're going to figure that one out. We're going to take that one offline. But uh, good to have <laughs> you back. Good to good to go over some Dynasty stuff this week. A lot of implications from you know, a couple of good, uh, big injuries, a um, couple you know, huge breakout performances during the fantasy playoffs for some of those rookies some of those younger guys, and it seems like a lot of values have changed after this past week. Uh, any first takes on you know last week's results? Yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff that uh, happened this past week that we need to talk about in terms of fantasy playoffs and um, you know how it how it relates in terms of value going forward. Because I think this end of the season stretch is kind of when we learn a lot about some of these guys. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I think we highlighted a couple of guys uh, during like DFS stuff and stuff like that, where some guys seem to show up more this time of year. Um, we could save some of the guys that we're going to talk about for those segments. But um, I have a couple of news things that I want to go over before we jump into the risers and fallers overall across the board and, and the rookies as well. Um one injury this week that I want to react to is Keaton Mitchell. Yep, that's a big uh, out one. for the season, ACL. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, it kind of felt like his first, I don't know how many carries he actually ended up getting, but it felt like his first game where he was sort of on his way to a bigger workload. Um, he got nine carries before he went down uh, alongside two receptions, almost, you know, 100 all-purpose yards. He was definitely the most explosive player on the Ravens. Uh, could have helped them going into the playoffs and maybe set himself up for some longer-term success there. It seems like uh, he's going to have a tough time to come back. And, you know, the ACL injury at this time of year can be really tough and, and have a long road to recovery. Yeah, we might not see him until he's 23. Yeah, when you say it like that, maybe it won't impact him too much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he looked really good. He is so fast. He is so fast. I mean, he look, makes Gus Edwards look awful. And Gus Edwards had like three years of being the most efficient running back in the league. I think it has something to do with the Ravens offense for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a guy that you want to get involved there. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, there was not much else going on on that offense. No, not last night. I mean... Besides one guy, uh, we could probably talk about later as well. Yeah. Um, one other takeaway that I had from this weekend that I wanted to go over is uh, Mitch Trubisky's benched. Mm-hmm. He stinks. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't feel like there's going to be any crazy long-term impacts of this. Um, if you had Mitch Trubisky, you probably knew that he was not here to stay, so nothing really crazy there. Um. You know, Mason Rudolph, maybe he raises the floor of Deontay Johnson. Uh, it feels like George Pickens is going to struggle until they actually find their solution at quarterback. Maybe Jaden Daniels comes in. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Mitch Trubisky, not going to be the guy in uh, Pittsburgh too much longer. Or any any longer. <laughs> Just permanently. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he might be done in the league, to be honest. He's just not really a good backup at all. Yeah, clearly. Um, so. One of the things I was thinking about while watching football this weekend was just how young all the quarterback, quarterbacks are in this league right now. Um, it's a new era, and it's going to be a lot of shuffling around the next four years in terms of teams getting new quarterbacks and um, quarterbacks changing teams. So I think there's a lot to look forward to in terms of uh, value for some of these guys on teams like Pickens, Deontay Johnson, where they have a quarterback who's young, but he's not getting the job done. I, I think that it's an era where they're going to be able to switch out that quarterback pretty quickly. I agree. Um, I do think they're going to find somebody in the draft, probably not somebody that's already in the league, like in you know Aiden O'Connell or somebody like that. Um but there is a lot of talent, especially in those backup quarterback spots. Uh, seems like a lot of those guys, you know, the Jake Brownings of the world, are able to come in and make a pretty big difference. Um, but then you also have like Gardner Minshew. Um, 
Zach Wilson is benched now, but you know, uh, I don't know, head injury, non concussion. I don't know what that was about. Yeah. Um, it feels like there is a lot of talent. Uh, not I don't know if it's necessarily starting talent, but a lot of solid backup talent to to press those starters. It's gonna be tough to be a rookie next year if you have somebody like that behind you. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was glad you mentioned Gardner Minshew because <laughs> that guy just yeah. con- continues to perform. He's awesome. I love him. I love Gardner it's like Minshew. He's raising the floor of everybody. It's like Michael Pittman is super solid there uh, week after week. And this week, a couple guys did struggle. Um, but I feel like Gardner n- never really did. Yeah. Yeah. Um... There were some fun games this weekend, though, uh, and that was one of them. Gardner Minshew, three touchdown passes. Take that. Yeah. I was a big fan of the Bears game. I thought that was a fun one to watch. Felt like Bears Bears make or break season. Um, Justin Fields kind of showed that he was sort of the guy. Um, I, I know they weren't able to get the win, but he had some crazy plays, good passes. There's talk of Justin Fields being the long-term starting quarterback in Chicago right now. I don't know how serious that talk is, but um, they're going to have a decision to make when it comes down to Caleb Williams, Gardner Minshew. I think if they were to trade that first overall pick, um, maybe move back five, six spots, pick up a first or two in the process, plus um, you know somebody that helps fill out one of their holes, uh, they might have a better chance with Justin Fields than Caleb in that situation. Yeah, I feel like they're almost trying to use Justin Fields in a similar fashion to like uh, Lamar Jackson slash Jalen Hurts, like a combination. Like letting him be kind of that fast power runner, almost like a hybrid of the two. Well, also like, you know, getting their short passing uh, plays to kind of set up the run and also hit the long ones when you can. Yeah, absolutely. It was cool to see um, Lamar last night kind of working around the pocket. I haven't watched too many Ravens games like on their own this year. Feels like Lamar just uses that speed to stay, you know, around the pocket, just constantly has his eyes downfield. And that's something that you want to see out of um, Justin Fields going forward. He has gotten better at that. Um, Maybe he makes that adjustment. Yeah, I heard something actually very interesting in the Ravens game. Um, They were talking about how they were moving the pocket around to kind of create space and avoid the rush. Because obviously Lamar can roll out to whichever side Mm -hmm. he chooses. Um, But the most interesting thing I heard was that the Ravens actually play with like six linemen. And they basically rotate guys in like one guy will sit for a drive. I thought that was very interesting. Hmm. That is very interesting. So they're kind of um, trying to keep guys really fresh. Cardio, trying to keep up. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, and I don't know. Maybe that's like the way to go because it seems like their offensive line's been awesome. Yeah, I could see it. Um, definitely one of their strengths. Do you want to jump over into some of the rookie risers and fallers? I know we've already covered uh, kind of a few guys here, but. Not really for the rookies, though. So let's just jump right in. Yeah, I'll start with a guy who you've been a little bit a little bit critical of. Um, Jordan Addison had a huge week. Um, six catches on yeah. six targets for 111 and two touchdowns. That's a good day. I thought he was going to win me my playoff game. Um, you know, I snuck into the playoffs. Had Jordan Addison come out, Chris Godwin. Uh, but that was about it for people that showed up. But... Feels like Jordan Addison was kind of... I said he was touchdown dependent this week. Uh, He got two touchdowns, 111 yards. Crazy week for him. Um, You were right about Nick Mullins. It feels like he was able to, you know, make these receivers flourish a little bit uh, in situations where I didn't think they were going to be able to. He was moving the ball downfield. Um, It felt like he had a really solid game, which led to Jordan Addison's really solid game. There's that one touchdown by Addison where he kind of just ripped off like a 50-yarder or whatever. Um, 
I think that was on like he was like falling down. Nick Mullins was falling down, threw the ball to Addison, and he just kind of ripped it across the field on a on a drag route or a crossing route, um, right into the end zone. Addison's good. Yeah, he uh, is. He that was a contested ball. Yeah. Where do you think Addison like the Addison Jefferson duo ranks in the league right now? Um, if we were to talk about, you know, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, um, you know, Devontae Smith and AJ Brown, who are playing right now, even like DK Lockett, JSN, uh, Waddle, and Tyreek. Are they above any of those duos? Are they, you know, right behind one of them? Or what do you think? I would say they're right, right behind, I think, Tyreek and Waddle. I think first I wow. have. Yeah, I think I have to take. I want to say I want to take AJ Brown and Devontae Smith as like my best duo right now. I think they're just two wide receiver ones on the same team, it looks like. Um, and then it's Jamar Chase, T. Higgins in my mind. And then I think Tyreek, just because, and I think this is just because Waddle and Addison are young. I think that they can still prove a little bit more. Um, obviously, Devontae Smith is also young, but went to the Super Bowl. He's shown that he can be productive, help them win games, get you fantasy points. So I think for right now, I, I like that duo best. Just seems like such a dynamic duo. Um, but I think this Jefferson Addison one with, with a quarterback that can, you know, win games and also get them up and score in points, I think that they could easily crawl into that number one spot. Yeah, and you got to think the QB play hasn't been as good this season. Uh, obviously, Jefferson's been out a little bit as well. Yeah. But I actually have that Tyreek Waddle duo like at the top for me. And then it's Devonta Smith, AJ Brown. But I think Tyreek is such a game breaker right now. Um, Waddle's good enough, but I think Tyreek's, you know, had a better season than Justin Jefferson. Uh, obviously, Jefferson's <laughs> been hurt, but. <laughs> you know, Tyreek's kind of at the top right now. I think last year he had a better season too. Feels like he's the best receiver um, in the league to me right now. He's kind of making an MVP case, uh, which kind of got shut down this past week with the, the big win over the Jets. They played the Jets, right? Um, yeah. He didn't play though. I think they just played the Jets before then. Yeah, I know. So they, he, his MVP case got kind of shut down yeah. because he didn't play. And... Waddle was able to go for 142 and a touchdown. Um, but I don't know. I think they're the best duo in the league right now. But I, I agree. I feel like Addison, if he gets another year under his belt, maybe two, um, him and Jefferson could be the best duo in the league, depending on their quarterback. Yeah. If they can both stay healthy, get a quarterback, I think they could easily climb into that number one spot. Um, the only problem I have with the Tyreek Waddle is this kind of the same thing you're saying is like Tyreek is like if he's if there's a one and a two I guess Tyreek is like one a you know like he is yeah he's the guy he's so yeah, far he he's so far ahead that he brings Waddle up you know like I don't think we can say that Waddle in my opinion I don't think we can say that Waddle is more talented than T. Higgins or Devontae Smith, in my opinion. About Jordan Addison. So that's what I'm saying. We we need to wait and see with these two guys. Um, obviously, do you think Addison or Waddle? Who would you take right now? I mean, rest of career. Right now? Um, I think it depends, though, because I don't know. I would I would say Waddle because you're getting a little more size. I think Waddle just because of the quarterback play. Yes, that too. I'm just thinking in terms of talent. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be in that Miami system for a very long time. Um, feels like there's a lot of fantasy points to come for years uh, there. Yeah, it should be. Mike McDaniels is awesome. That offense is yeah, just going to uh, keep churning out points. Completely agree. You want to jump over to the next guy? I feel like we spent a long time on Addison here. Well, worth it. I mean, he had had kind of a down few weeks there, and we were wondering whether or not he was going to be able to be fantasy relevant going down the stretch. 
And it looks like Nick Mullins could be the answer, but I don't know. Well, not the answer long term, just for points value. Um, mm. So the second guy is obviously Sam Laporta. Big game again. Crazy game. Yeah, three touchdowns, 56 yards, five receptions. I mean, if he's going to score three touchdowns, I don't, I don't care how many yards he has. Yeah, Laporta's been awesome this year. Um, I had him in some DFS stuff, and I didn't even win in those, so it was tough. I had Laporta and Gibbs in those. Um, but Laporta just having you know one of the best rookie seasons of a tight end, there really isn't much else to say besides he's probably – is he the tight end one? He's the tight end one, right? Dynasty tight end one. I gotta Either believe him or Hawkinson. I gotta believe he'd be number one. Yeah, yeah. I think that offense is so explosive and relies on him. Uh, Sam Laporta officially dynasty tight end one. Um, yeah, he's everywhere. Feels like he's always you know making good plays. Not the most consistent guy. But when he pops off, he really pops off. He, he's had some crazy games. Still a rookie, though, you know? Like, so much time to grow into the player that he's going to become. Yeah. Yeah, and to be, you know, where he is right now is pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, I think another guy on that team that had a great week was Jameer Gibbs. Yep. Yeah, he went for he was super efficient, 11 for 100. The touchdown, and then just two receptions for eight yards. Thought he was going to get a little bit more involved in a touchdown there. Um, thought he was going to get a little bit more involved in the receiving game. Um, didn't need to. Amon Ra kind of had the the yards covered there. Laporta got the touchdowns in the receiving game, and, and Gibbs just kind of ran it up on him. Uh, Gibbs definitely that guy in Detroit. No, Dave Montgomery's a non-factor. Um, I think going forward, you know, he might be fantasy relevant as a flex or like an RB three, but it's not like he's going to impact Gibbs's value really ever again. Yeah. I, there's no way that you can have Gibbs just not getting the ball. I mean, he's going to help you win games. So yeah, I mean, David Montgomery is solid still. He's a great runner. I mean, he's had only a couple, what he had one dud this year and otherwise he missed a few for injury. Um, I don't know, man. I think that they're a great duo. Uh, but if you were to have Jameer Gibbs alone in that backfield, crazy value. Yeah. He's so explosive. I mean, really fits the Lions offense. Feels like kind of everything runs through Gibbs and then Goff has so many weapons at his disposal in the passing game. It's awesome. Probably why he hasn't been as involved in the passing game as we'd like. Uh, probably Laporta's fault, to be honest, but would rather have both those guys be successful. Yeah, and obviously Amon Ra demands targets too. Yeah, a lot of them. So, you know, there's only so many times you can throw the ball in a game. Um, even with Jameer Gibbs not catching a ton of passes, I mean, he's still got a receiving touchdown and he's, his value is just crazy. He's, he finds ways to get points. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anybody else you want to go over? Maybe uh, Rasheed Rice? That's who I was going to mention. Rasheed Rice, again, a guy who just gets points. Um, the last four weeks, though, what I've been impressed with is his target share has gone way up, and he's catching them. He, his worst ratio was 10 targets, 7 receptions. Um I'll take that any day of the week. Yeah, that's super impressive. Uh, you know, 91 yards and a touchdown this past week. Feels like that breakout game that we saw from him really opened the floodgates on Rasheed Rice points, and he's been super consistent ever since then. Yeah, as a Pats fan watching this game, I thought that we were kind of hanging around somehow for a second, and then all of a sudden Rasheed Rice was like, here's a touchdown, I'm going to get a couple first downs as well. And it seemed like, I wouldn't say he like took over the game because, I mean, it wasn't really a that dominant of a win, but 
I mean, 24, 14, 18, 24 points. It's, it's, he's on the come up and he got his highest snapshot share of the season so far last week at 92%. So he's only going up. Yeah. And he's been, you know, the wide receiver one on that team for a while and the number one target. Uh, Cause with the chiefs, you obviously have to talk about Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey, I wouldn't say he's on the way out, but does feel like Rasheed Rice has taken some of that short yardage work um, from him. Yeah, I'm slightly concerned about Kelsey. It seems like he's not, you know, and his his thing is always finding that soft spot of the defense and kind of finding those first downs when you need them and finding some creative play touchdowns. But it kind of seems like Rasheed Rice has taken that role and Travis mm-hmm. Kelsey is more of the decoy role now because you still have to respect them, obviously. But it does it does feel like Travis Kelsey's, you know, starting to not produce at the same level he always was. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I'm, I'm, again, not calling him on the way out, but there's a chance that he's not going to be as efficient. I think seeing like a tight end two or three season next year would be probably an appropriate reaction to what we've seen so far because he is still pretty consistent uh we'll have a touchdown like every other game uh i don't think he has this year but you know probably better things to come for him but he's he's very consistent yeah i mean he just manages to have solid games as well but i Mm -hmm. don't know um he just looks a little bit slower Yeah, he does. I mean, it's probably Taylor Swift's fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, want to go over that one last guy? Yeah, that's your guy. Yeah. Um. So obviously, Thursday night football was this week. We gave it a bit of a recap, but it feels like Aiden O'Connell might be the starter next year. Um, he only went 20 for 34, 248 yards, but he did have those four touchdowns. Uh, I would not credit the win to him necessarily. It feels like it was more of a lack of the Chargers playing well, just consistently fumbling the ball. Credit Staley, credit um, Staley, credit Staley. Yeah, it's, it's all <laughs> Staley <laughs> throwing the game. Um, but... You know, he, he might be the starter there next year. There's a chance that we see Aiden O'Connell with, you know, Devontae Adams another year. He's not the most potent fantasy, you know, outputter, but he's good enough. I mean, he's had a, he's had a couple, eh, not really, I guess. He had one game where he threw for 250 yards, 270 yards, but he had three interceptions. I mean, it's his only good game so far. So yeah, it really is. <laughs> so I guess we need to see what he does these next three weeks, especially against Kansas City and Denver, um, two teams that have decent passing defenses. Um, so I think I think there's still a lot to be desired with him, but obviously if he's gonna start putting it together, that was the week that you could say that he did. Yeah. Um... Definitely like a, an uptick going forward. Don't know if he holds a ton of value. Um, again, you, we're going to have to see what happens over the next few weeks. But there's now a chance that he's the starter there next year. Uh, I feel like before this game, there wasn't really a chance. Uh, if that makes sense. It, it looked like they were going to go to free agency again or do something else. Try to get a new quarterback in there. Yeah, they'll be doing something for sure, I think. I don't I don't think they're hanging on to him as the guy. He's a 25-year-old rookie. I could see him being the backup. Kenny Pickett was like a 25-year-old rookie. Didn't stop the Steelers. <laughs> well, we just talked about how he's not going to be the guy. We talked about Mitch, but Kenny Pickett won't. Yeah, they're going to go to like Jaden Daniels. Love to see that. We'll go to somebody for sure. Um, there was... I guess, I don't know how to put this, but a few guys left that I wanted to talk about. Um, And that's just the Green Bay rookies as a whole. Thanks. (laughs) You're welcome. Um, Jaden Reed had another great week. 
Um, Tucker Craft had another good week. And Dontavion Wicks, um, it's kind of my dark horse in that offense. He's just kind of been consistent, I guess, sort of. He just he hasn't been getting too many snaps, but for what he gets, I think production's there. Um, his last six games, um, and in the first four of these, he was below 45% snaps, 49, 51, 91, 43 yards. I mean, for that kind of snap count, that's solid. And then he got an uptick, had a bad game, whatever. But this past week, he had six receptions for 97 yards. It kind of felt like he was actually involved in the offense. He's one of their, I guess, bigger guys. at 6'1", 206, more of a possession kind of big body guy. So maybe something to watch. Yeah, um, and definitely Jaden Reed as well. Like, as you said, we saw him do pretty well this week. He, Jordan Love missed him on a pretty easy throw in the end zone. Um, if he got that, I think he would add two touchdowns. Crazy, you know, potential week for Jaden Reed with uh, Christian Watson out. I don't know what Christian Watson is going to really impact them on when he comes back. Like, do we see a down tick in Jaden Reed? Uh, maybe Dontavian Wicks takes a back seat. Uh, we'll have to wait and see once we see that. But I agree. I think these guys are, you know, continuing to step up. Uh, the defense really is what let us down this past week. Um, but there is one guy on Green Bay that I think took a hit this week. And he's a rookie. Um, I think Luke Musgrave, with seeing Tucker Craft um, be successful the past two, three weeks, um, Musgrave has been injured. Uh, It felt like he was the more athletic, you know, tight end prospect there, somebody that had not really done a ton in college. But uh, I think Tucker Craft had. And... Tucker Craft has stepped up where Musgrave, you know, wasn't as good. Uh, I'm not sure if, you know, that spot goes back to Musgrave when he comes back from that injury. Um, but there's a chance that this is Craft's spot now. Yeah, I think he's earned it to this point. Cool. <laughs> All right. Follows. I think so too, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good transition to Fallers. Um, honestly, a weird week for Fallers. Sure. Um, so someone I had as obviously a big Faller is Keaton Mitchell. We talked about him briefly already. Um, that's a shitty injury to get, especially because you're potentially missing all of next year. So depending on what happens, I guess it's wait and see. But he kind of looked like it could have been his backfield if he kept going throughout the playoffs. And I don't know. They got a, they got a lot of guys in that backfield. But um, he is explosive. He looked good. So that's it just sucks to see. Um, but big faller because of the injury. To me, with that injury, the Ravens are kind of looking like a team that's going to draft a running back uh second round running back maybe like you know 230 get braylon allen bring somebody else in um you know you kind of get the good contract option on that i don't know what gus edwards contract looks like but he has been around for a while and they probably don't want to extend him um jk dobbins is pretty much never gonna be anything ever again Unfortunately, I'm just fully out on him with the Achilles, the ACL, the MCL, the list goes on there. Um, So I think I see the Ravens drafting somebody, and I think that somebody is going to end up being the rookie running back one. It's a hot take of the episode, but I think they... You know, end up end up finding somebody that they like, and then we have them tied to the Ravens and Lamar Jackson for years to come. Yeah, I don't think that's a hot take. I think that's very reasonable. It's a position that they've struggled to find health um, mm-hmm. to go to go along with the production because they're getting plenty of production from that position. They just haven't had any consistency with 
the guy carrying the ball, whether it's Justice Hill, Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, and now Keaton Mitchell. It just seems like none of these guys can avoid big injuries. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> honestly, I'd be a little bit scared of the the guy coming in. Like, if he's able to not get injured, I know that there was that report, like, in the offseason where the Ravens training staff got, like, Fs across the board. But uh, I don't know. That'd be cool to see somebody tied to that offense for a while. feels like they have leaned in more to the run this year, the running back run. I didn't know there was a report on that. Yeah, there was. They did, like, reports of everybody every team's like different training staff and like their different amenities and stuff like that like their locker rooms and stuff but the ravens got like the worst ratings across the board in terms of uh trainers and like team health and safety and stuff like that uh which hasn't aged well <laughs> think about how many injuries they've had um so that's pretty brutal yeah yeah who you got next? Uh, I have a few guys that I want to talk about. Um, but I think the next one that is kind of the logical guy to bring up here is Bijan. Um, there's a chance that Bijan just slipped from, you know, running back one overall to like running back two, I think, which is kind of a big fall. I know, I know we talked about HN being running back one last week, which is kind of a, an insane take, and I love it. But <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like Gibbs has stepped up into the most reliable um, guy outside of McCaffrey. He's you know on one of the best offenses in the league. He has incredible usage. He has incredible efficiency. Um, and somebody that doesn't have incredible usage is Bijan. Um, and his efficiency hasn't been too great either. Uh, This past week, he had 11 yards rushing, um, three yards receiving on seven carries and one reception. He lost to the Panthers. I think the you could maybe even consider him a riser if Arthur Smith gets fired. But if he doesn't, and we see him again next year, like this could be the turning point where Arthur Smith is fired, you know, whether it's tonight, tomorrow, next week next month uh as long as it happens by next season um i don't think it matters too much and Bijan would probably get you know more usage ideally they'd bring in somebody that likes to use kyle pitts drake london Bijan, um which i don't think he's asking too much but you know if if he stays around Bijan took a big hit um Bijan took a big hit just because of his efficiency and honestly um a little bit scared for Bijan. I thought it was going to be automatic this year. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Um, something I was thinking about this weekend as well was what's going on with the future of the Falcons. They have young studs at the positions you want them at. Running back, tight end, wide receiver. It kind of seems like they're setting it up to have like a good coach come in and bring this team like a winning culture like a Mike McDaniels or something um obviously like they could go sign another guy for that offense um improve their offensive line but it doesn't seem like they're too too far away in my opinion it just seems like they need that coach who's gonna utilize these guys um just pay attention to this game and I have a share in Bijan in a playoff team and that hurt. So I was watching and Algier was out snapping them. And I was like, what's, mm-hmm. what's going on here? This, this hasn't happened all year long. So I was very confused by it. And he's a, yeah, he's a follower this week, but I think that he still has all the talent in the world to be right neck and neck with Jameer Gibbs. It's just, it's usage and volume like we talk about with a lot of these guys. Yeah, absolutely. I was actually able to pull off a win with Bijan on one of my teams, thanks to Chris Godwin. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> After we just crapped on um, Chris Godwin last week. I know. he. I, I, 
I ended up sitting, I remember talking about this. I was, I was having a hard time deciding between Jordan Addison, Chris Godwin. Uh, honestly, Jarek McKinnon, I saw him as a good option. Gus Edwards, Brandon Cooks, uh, Elijah Moore, all these guys. And I ended up going with Addison and Godwin. Um, kind of made the right decisions there, but still got crushed. So it doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> one more guy that I want to talk about here is Josh Downs. Um, feels like Josh Downs has been slipping a little bit. He's had three games, four, five, six, six games in a row under 50 receiving yards. Um, he's seen some decent usage during these games with three targets, three targets, five targets, 13 targets, three targets, one target. Um, so nothing great, but nothing awful either. I mean, the one target's pretty awful. Um, but it feels like he's kind of fallen by the wayside this year. Uh, these past six weeks, he was pretty highly regarded early on. Um, you know, somebody that we thought would come right in and make a difference right away as that slot receiver, um, on the Colts, but there's a chance that Josh Downs is kind of going to be permanently mid and maybe a flex play at best um, if he's uh, uh, able to find more volume, more consistency. Yeah. He did not do anything for the last, what, six, seven weeks at least? Six, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Josh Downs, yeah. it's It's tough with him because... Like, he had a week four weeks ago where he had 13 targets, but he didn't have much to show from it. Um, no, he didn't. <laughs> so, I don't know. He, he's a weird one because, I don't know, the volume is there sometimes and the production's there sometimes. It's There's no consistency. And that's one of the things that matters most to me um, when I'm looking at a fantasy roster. Do I have a guy who can go out there and just give me, like, 15 points? And I don't have that with him, and I don't think we will. So, yeah, he's definite faller again. I think that's the third week in a row we've called him a faller. So, at this yeah. at this point, I think we consider him fallen. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Uh, there is a metric for rookie receivers where if they put up 525 yards or more, their probability of you know success goes up you know, significantly, like three, four times. What's he at? He's at 631. Jesus. There's a chance that he, you know, maybe we see Anthony Richardson come back, look his way a little bit more. Uh, you know, Jonathan Taylor comes back and leads to some pressure off of the receivers. Um, but where it stands right now with his usage, with his efficiency, with his production, um, does feel like he's a guy that I would need to see a pretty big change going forward to consider him, you know, fantasy viable and fantasy dependable. Um, right now, he's just not that guy. I'm not comfortable playing him. Yeah, I agree there. I wouldn't be comfortable either. Um, in terms of other guys I want to talk about, though, um, there's probably one other guy I want to talk about, not necessarily as a faller or a riser. I guess you could say he was a faller this week, but I wouldn't say he's a faller in general. Um, I just want to talk about Zay Flowers because I find mm. him, I find him very interesting. Um, obviously, he had a very bad week this past week. Um, two targets, one reception, seven yards. That's it. Um, then the week before, he has six for sixty and a touchdown. Um, he's been a very solid rookie this year. There's no question about that. He's been one of the better draft picks um, at wide receiver for this class. So that being said, it does seem like just with this Baltimore offense that sometimes these receivers just get cold for a game or two. I feel like we've always kind of seen that with um, like a Lamar Jackson led offense. It's kind of whoever has the hot hand, he just gives the ball to. Um, yeah. 
So I don't know. Are we going to be able to see consistency out of him? Because that's like, we, we know the talent's there, and we know he can go out there, give you touchdowns, give you yards. But can he do it consistently is my question. Honestly, I'm not sure. It feels like he's had some consistency this year. Uh, it feels like, you're right, Lamar does go to the high hand, whether it's Isaiah Likely, uh, Mark Andrews, or you know even OBJ at times. Um, I guess my hope is that Zay kind of gets the, you know, rapport, rapport with Lamar that Mark Andrews has. Um, maybe he gets more of the usage next year as, you know, non, a non-rookie. Um, but it's kind of just a hope that he, you know, further establishes that connection um, and is more than kind of just another guy on that offense and is kind of Lamar's guy instead. Yeah, which it was just a question because, I don't know, I feel like I never find a consistent receiver with Lamar Jackson, and it, I think everybody kind of had that hope with Zay Flowers after having some bigger weeks. But I don't know. I mean, I guess it's it's early to tell, but it's a question worth thinking about as his career progresses. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just have one more guy here for the rookie followers okay. as well. Um, I think Devon Achan fell a little bit this past week. Not crazy. Uh, he got you know nine carries, thirty-two yards, with three point six average, and then an additional three receptions for thirty yards. Um, but. What I saw is that he's very obviously, you know, the second fiddle to Raheem Mostert. I know it doesn't really happen that often where there's like kind of that 1A, 1B running back and they're both very fantasy viable, Um, but that is happening right now. I'm hoping that, you know, A-Chan takes a step up next year and is able to overtake Mostert um, considering, you know, A-Chan's only 22 and Mostert's 31, Um, but... I just saw a little cause for concern this past week and, you know, maybe he doesn't take that step up um, to that, you know, running back 1A. What does that look like? Um, You know, he's only 188 pounds. He's kind of injury prone in that sense. Is there any cause for concern here? I think it's again, we got to, that's a question that we got to pay attention to throughout his career. Um, he's got to prove next year, I think, that he can stay healthy. Um, I don't think we need to see a top five fantasy performance throughout next year from him, like in terms of his season average or season total points. I think we just need to see consistency again. Um, just stay on the field, stay healthy, and make your managers happy. Um, but I think as long as he can stay on the field there's no telling you know how good he could be i guess in the next six seven years but Mm -hmm. yeah that is something that you can be concerned about is is he a workhorse is he going to be the guy who's out there for three downs i think you need at least a top 12 uh season next year to be happy with your return if you're trading for him now yes 100 percent yeah, if you're if you're trading for him now, yeah, um, I think you still get that top twelve. I think you do. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, it feels like the efficiency in, in Miami is very solid. You want to jump over to overall risers? Yes, sir. Number one, James Cook. Yeah, yeah that was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> James Cook went nuts. He went crazy. Man. 180 yards rushing, added a touchdown on the ground. Um, we were talking about that last week, so that was great to see. And then a touchdown through the air. I mean, we were talking about him as a receiving back, but then all of a sudden he goes out, gets 25 carries, 7 yards a carry. That was awesome. I mean, he just dominated Dallas, who I think we all had as maybe a top 
two, three team in the league. So that was pretty crazy. James Cook is incredible. He single-handedly won me my consolation. Uh, not my consolation. He got me out of the toilet bowl this week all by himself, which is pretty <laughs> sweet. <laughs> but on a more serious note, James Cook feels like he could be – I mean, he finished the year around the RB7. Feels like he could be a top 12 dynasty running back going forward. Uh, he's tied to this offense, I think, for another two years um, at the very least without any extension or anything like that. So great to see that he has that efficiency. He was kind of, as you said, like single-handedly able to beat uh, Dallas. I think Josh Allen had like not that many attempts at all through the air. Uh, he... I think he had 94 yards 94 yards on 15 attempts yeah. seven completions <laughs> yeah james cook carried the bills uh you nailed it last week during the dfs episode you highlighted it that you had them in both your lineups i was like what are you doing you gotta you know stagger your picks a little bit um but you hit that right on the head no i will not stagger <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, Enough said. James Cook was fantastic, and I think he yeah, can keep so, doing it. So, one more guy that I want to talk about is Justin Fields. Um, yeah, looking at the box score, it looks like his game was awful. Like 46.5 QBR, 166 yards, touchdown, two interceptions. Um, but watching the game, you know, we saw. Um, Robert Tanyan missed that wide open catch, basically a guaranteed touchdown. Um, I think one of these interceptions was a Hail Mary at the end of the half. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Hail Mary at the end of the game, Darnell Mooney had caught it and then dropped that. So Justin Fields looked really good this past week. Um, it's so good that people are, you know, starting to ask, what do the Bears do? It's not like an easy answer anymore. Um, and I think that is just to show that, you know, Justin Fields is going to have a starting job next year. I don't know where, um, but he's going to be a starter. Um, so I think whenever Justin Fields is playing, he's, you know, efficient enough on the ground and he makes some decent decisions through the air. Uh, you know, most of the time these days. So he's a pretty solid fantasy quarterback uh, as long as he's playing. Yeah, I think you put that well. He'll have a starting job somewhere. Um, I mean, someone's going to be willing to take a chance on him if it's not the Bears next year. So, yeah, um, his stats weren't great, as you said. It's kind of what personally I've come to expect from him is – Sure, he can run the ball, but not do too much through the air. And if he does something through the air, he doesn't do anything on the ground. Um, and then once in a while, you get the one that comes together. So for me, again, it's the consistency thing. Um, still a young guy, still going to have a chance in this league. So, yeah, that's all I got on him. Sweet. Yeah, completely agree. Um, another guy. Anybody else up here? Yeah, another guy that uh, um, we briefly mentioned was Jalen Waddle. Um, big week, and we were kind of asking him for it. His snap. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, and his snap count went down as well. Really? Yeah. It feels like every week we were saying. I mean, he's priced as a wide receiver one, and he's going to give you like twelve points, almost guaranteed. But he's only going to give you twelve points. And he's going for seven to eight thousand on you know DraftKings every single week. Uh, show us something more, and he finally did it this week, um, which is pretty good to see. Yeah, eight receptions, hundred forty-two, and a touchdown. That's pretty damn good. I'll take that every week. <laughs> yeah, just a you know a good performance for a guy that needed a big one. So. Mm -hmm. That's all there really is to say about that. We know he's good. We know what he's capable of. Just do it. Yeah. Um, next guy up here, David Njoku. 
I was waiting. We I was waiting have for you. Nailed it. <laughs> December Njoku is insane. <laughs> Ten receptions, 104 yards, a touchdown versus the Bears. It's after his six reception, 91 yard, two touchdown performance versus the Jags. Um, you know, December third, we're not gonna talk about. That's basically November. But these past two December games have been crazy. Joe Flacco has brought David Njoku back to life. Um, you know, it's great to see him there. I think he's close to I think he's the the fantasy playoffs tight end two right now behind Laporta. Um just really great to see that from him. I might if I survive tonight by having AJ Brown score less than six more points, um <laughs> Ninjoko might become the starter. Uh, over Kelsey next week for me. He's he's that good right now. Honestly, I want to see Joe Flacco lead this team next year. Oh, that'd be so awesome. It would be electric. <laughs> I I Imagine love if Joe Flacco it. was like thirty one. <laughs> that would just be incredible. Just throwing bombs. Yeah. No, but it, yeah, Joe Flacco's elite. And Joku's been awesome. Um, he's just been open. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't know how else I feel to like put he's, it. he's always good um, but it feels like sometimes he just gets found and sometimes he doesn't it's almost like he's like the better Kyle Pitts interesting take fighting words <laughs> <laughs> yeah and Joku has been awesome he's getting open Flacco's finding him um, Watson to prison. Let's let's go. Yeah, team prison for Watson. <laughs> All right, another guy I wanted to talk about was Ty Chandler. Yeah, he had a great game. I think he's good. Better than everybody else they have. I think. Oh, I don't yeah. know if he's guaranteed that starting starting spot next year, but you know the Minnesota Vikings are not going to bring in running back in free agency. I would really hope that they don't waste a draft pick on a running back, but that does seem to be something that teams do when they're stuck in that position for no reason. Um, So I think if we are able to see him as a starter again next year, um, there's a good chance he's fantasy relevant. Yeah, he was just really good this week. And he looks fast. He gets open for some passes so I don't think there's a ton that we can say because it's only been one week of production but that being said I thought he looked phenomenal watching the game yeah I mean how do you feel about those Saturday games I feel like my soul kind of got tormented all weekend (laughs) like I love watching football but you want me to wake up on Saturday you know, I woke up at like nine, did some stuff in the morning. Um, and then I told my fiance, I'm like, hey, I'm going to watch football for the, all of today. And tomorrow. And we made a little thing out of it. Went to a bar for the uh, the night game because I was like, I, I don't know. I'm not I'm just going to sit on my couch all of Saturday. Um, and then wake up Sunday and repeat. It's like, oh my <laughs> god! Like I get it. I love football more than the next guy, but you know, when you have two days in the weekend and the NFL says I'm taking both of those, it, it it's a lot. <laughs> I'm completely fine with it as long as I'm not watching the Bengals play against the Vikings, and it's the yeah. only game I can watch. Well, what was that second Saturday game? That game was just as bad. Colts and someone else. <laughs> Colts Steelers. Yeah, yeah, that was that wasn't fun either. It was a blowout. The only good one was the Lions Broncos, but at that point, the the Lions scored five touchdowns in like three minutes. It was over. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. Don't make me watch. I think if you're gonna football. give us those Saturday games, <laughs> you gotta give them, give us good games like flex. Anything out of Sunday Night Football just to put in those Saturday games. It's like the new primetime. 
Yeah. Um, is there anybody else you had on here for some overall risers? I mean, does Brock Purdy even count anymore? He's going to win the MVP. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, huh? How about uh, I, Noah Brown? I don't know. Noah Brown had a good game. I just don't think he's going to be able to, you know, be consistent with that once we see both those other guys back. Um, whether we actually see them back this season is still up for debate, but I hesitate to value Noah Brown as anything in Dynasty. Sure, and I see why you say that. Um the only thing that I would say about that is that we did talk about previously that CJ Stroud was supporting him. Um, what's his name? Nico Collins and Tank Dell all at the same time. When they're all healthy he and on the field, they were all doing just fine. I think we get a drafted wide receiver, though. That's the issue. I think in the second round, the Texans are going to take a wide receiver. I mean, I could see why they would, but it seems like they have other holes on their team that they need to fill. Yeah, wide receivers sell tickets. So do wins. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, they get enough wins because they have CJ Stroud. Um, at least right now. Yeah. Um, how about Joshua Palmer? Honestly, like, no, I don't, I also don't see that. Maybe, I guess we talked about, there's a chance that the Chargers blow everything up and the two young guys left on the roster are Josh Palmer and Quentin Johnston. In that situation, maybe he's worth something. Um, I'm not familiar with what his contract situation is, though, so I don't know if he's going to be there next year. Um, I think he is. I think and in that case, where I think he's got another year. I think he's got another year, and then he has his fifth year option. Or no, Does he have a fifth year. No, option? he doesn't. He, no, he doesn't. It was a f- My bad. He only has one more. One more year. Oh, that sucks because I think that's going to be the year that overlaps with like Keenan Allen's last year, potentially Mike Williams last year. If, Actually, I think Mike Williams is a free agent. I don't know how their all their contracts are weird over there. Um, but you know, Josh Palmer. Maybe they trade him. If they trade him, he could be relevant. Like trade him to the Panthers for third round pick. That'd be a sweet deal. Yeah, I could see something like that. I don't. I don't see why not. Um, but if he goes to the Panthers, I think he's kind of stuck. <laughs> it's just fine. I mean, if he's like the wide receiver two on the Panthers, take that all day. But the Panthers suck. Rather have a wide receiver two than a wide receiver four. But they suck. I don't know, man. <laughs> I think they they are on the up and up. Just stay asleep. All right. I think there's two more guys that I want to talk about. Is there anybody you would like to mention? Um... I also just had Lamar just as a quick mention because I thought he had an insane game last night. I don't know if he's actually really up, um, but it feels like some of the guys around him are more down. and He's been consistent this year. Yeah, I think we know what we're getting there. Um, yeah, just elite quarterback play. Mm-hmm. Um, the two guys that I wanted to mention – are Zamir White and Isaiah Likely. We kind of talked about Likely a little bit, but Likely is good. He is really good. But doesn't they just sign Mark Andrews to a new contract? I don't think it matters. I mean, if we're going to talk about Zay Flowers not being relevant because week to week, like... Lamar chooses his best target and just goes to him. How is Isaiah likely going to be relevant in season long formats? Like maybe as a fill in on a bye week or in best ball leagues, I could see it. But 
you know, week to week dynasty fantasy football. I don't know, man. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, I don't know. The only thing is it's Mark Andrews has been healthy like his entire career. So I get why Mark Andrews is definitely still the guy. And obviously he's elite. But I think there has to be a place in this offense for Isaiah Likely. I think there has to be. He just, he's good. He's agile at 6'4", 240. Like, there's a place for that somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he's honestly in the worst situation he possibly could be. That makes sense, (laughs) being stuck by Mark Andrews. Yeah, Um, that's true, With especially with how down we've talked about um, the tight ends being this year. Yeah, there's a chance that he'd be a lot better on a different team. I don't know if he will get that opportunity. But maybe he's the guy after Lamar, or not Lamar, uh, after Mark Andrews. He's only 23. Yeah, I just hope his career doesn't get wasted, because I think he has a ton of talent. Yeah, it could be a good stash. Um He's in the second year of a four-year deal right now. We've got two more after this. I think there's got to be a place for him in the offense somewhere. I'd definitely be stashing him. Yeah, I mean, if he's available, maybe trade a third for him. He could be relevant pretty soon. So the other guy I mentioned was Zamir White. What do you think about him? I I have him in one of our leagues. <laughs> I, I don't know if I trust him going forward. Like, are we really going to see Zamir White take over the starting job for the Raiders next year? Maybe. If we do, he's probably going to be fantasy relevant. Probably top 15, top 20 play good flex um but if we don't i want to see more yeah i mean i think we will see more um get another week or two out of him i don't know when josh jacobs is coming back but it feels like if they're you know pretty much are they pretty much eliminated from playoffs like what are what are the raiders doing I think they either were eliminated this week, or they have, or or they have one more. I don't think they could be eliminated on a forty-two point win. Um, no, the only reason I say this because other teams won. True. Let's see. Playoff. Uh, Hello, they're they're number twelve right now. Yeah, they're probably going to get eliminated this week, and then. I mean, teams don't, like, just sit there starting running backs after they get eliminated, but they should. Oh, I 100% agree. I think they should 100% sit Josh Jacobs. I think their coach and their entire organization knows that this team ain't going anywhere this year. So why the hell would you waste it? I actually do see a a world where Zamir White does end up being the starter next year. Um, You know, would you trade a third for Zamir White? Probably. Would you trade a second? No. Probably not. If you, if you would, you can do that right now. So the, give you that deal. <laughs> so the only reason I would say no is just because um, Antonio Pierce, if he's the head coach next year, Josh Jacobs will be there. Because he's talked about Josh Jacobs and Spillane being the two players he wants to build off of. So for that... Who builds off a running back? Yeah, right? So... If he's still there, um, then I would say, hold on. (laughs) Uh, But if they move on from Pierce, I could see them trying to trade Josh Jacobs or somehow cutting some salary there. Um, Especially because, what, he's on the, he's on the, what's it called? The franchise tag right now, right? I think so, yeah. So, could be interesting. Yeah, starting a rebuild with a fat contract for your 
running back is not the way to do it. Not at all. We'll see. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Yeah, 100%. I think uh, Samir White showed us a little something, but I hope we get to see it again. Me too. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Want to jump over into our followers? Yes, sir. All right. So, um, the follower that I had this week was Austin Eckler. That's a good one. He was pretty irrelevant. Five rushing attempts is what sticks out to me. Um, I get it. He's a great receiving back. But you have to have some sort of fantasy relevance on the ground, right? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think he's done. I think they're going to move on from him. And I don't don't know if he gets a start. Didn't he just get a one-year contract? I don't know. Something like that. I think he, yeah, I think his contract is not going to go on after the season. In that situation, I don't know if he finds like a good spot for him. Maybe he gets like a one-year, three million dollar deal or something like that somewhere. Um, but yeah, it feels like Eckler might be done. Yeah, it's getting to that point of the career. Unfortunately, um, I think he can still be a good running back, but he does look a little bit slow and doesn't look like there's going to be another team that's either willing to pay him a lot of money to be a starter or have him be a starter in general. So Mm -hmm. trade, trade, trade. Ideally, but I feel like that never happens. He'd just like get released and then sign with another team if he had a contract but i don't think he does so. no i'm saying like we'll i'm saying like in fantasy if you can if you have him yeah oh. try to try to ditch him if you can i feel like there's a situation where the timing works out so that he's a free agent and then right before the season he signs with like dallas or something like that for like two million and then his value probably goes up the most then and then you can trade him People might forget that he's old and, and not very good anymore, but you know, if it's not then, it's now. That would be the best time to get rid of him. Yeah, I mean, coming off that week, it would be nice if you could get a game where he gets like 15 points or something just to help you out. Um, but that would be really weird if Dallas picked him up after refusing to sign Zeke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be actually... <laughs> Who do you got for a um, caller? Garrett Wilson. Okay. I don't know, you know, how long this is going to last, but he had four targets, three receptions, 29 yards. Uh, Just awful game out of him. Awful game out of the Jets. Trevor Simeon sucks. Rest of the year, Garrett Wilson's irrelevant. Um, then I also had Brees Hall here. Feels like Brees Hall, six attempts, 12 yards. Playing from behind, but, you know, neither – Garrett Wilson or Brees Hall were able to get really involved or do anything. And that was very painful. This game was terrible. Yeah. Um, You pretty much said it all. It's just a tough, tough situation right now for a star wide receiver in the making. So we know he's going to be relevant in the future. It's just when. I hope so. (laughs) Oh, he will be. Don't worry. Don't worry. He'll be just fine. <laughs> Freaking out over here. <laughs> you tweaking? Yeah, man. If Garrett if Garrett does not work out, I am not going to be in a good spot. I saw some sort of post that was like the top, um, the top wide receivers and which ones won offensive rookie of the year and. It's like, it's like a lot of them. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, I think he'll be just fine. All right, all right. Um, who you got next? Um, so the next person I want to bring up, it feels like we talk about him every single week. Um, I know you love him. I don't. It's Drake London. This was my next one too. <laughs> <laughs> 
he needs a new quarterback, man. He needs a new coach, a new quarterback. Uh, and I think we'll be fine. Yeah, I think we're talking but, about him in the same breath as uh, Bijan right now. Yeah, and Kyle Pitts. It's like, what the what the hell are you doing, Arthur? Like, figure it out, man. Use your skill position players. Um, Desmond Ritter sucks, like really, really bad, and makes watching football terrible. Uh, not a Desmond Ritter fan at all. I think Bryce Young actually made Desmond Ritter look bad this past week, <laughs> which was pretty impressive. Um, Drake London, free Drake London. Free him from this Falcon system. Free him from Desmond Ritter. Uh, but I do think both of those you know, problems might be solved by the start of next season. What do you think there? I hope they are. Because... It's a lot of talent to go to waste, but, you know, it happens. So, I hope these two guys or three guys are not a casualty of that. That would be so awful. Like, the wide receiver one, the tight end one, and the running back one. Two generational (laughs) prospects. One, you know, stereotypical alpha receiver. He was picked at, like, eight please no <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be crazy three position players in the top 10 or yeah was Pitts top 10 or was he like 15 or something Pitts was like four yeah that's what i thought i forgot about that Pitts was the highest of them all yeah i don't know if drake london was top 10 i think he was like eight or Bijan was eight i think london was five and Pitts was four yeah, that would just be absolutely insane. There's, There's got to be a world where it works out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think they get someone like Justin Fields. Um, you know, that would be a perfect spot. Like, yeah, it would be sick. Even Jimmy Garoppolo coming in or, I don't know, somebody... Mac Jones. Oh Mac God. Jones would look pretty sick in the Falcons <laughs> system. He'd look so much better than Desmond Ritter. Um if he found out how to make a decision. Yeah, right. Um Bailey Zappi, actually, now that I think of it. <laughs> Bailey Zappi is throwing uh, darts, dude. Did you see the passes he was throwing this this past weekend? Yeah, he was sick. I texted my dad. I was like, so Zappi's officially 100% better than Mac, right? Like, there's yes. no question anymore. Without a doubt. Um, so that's pretty sweet. Yeah, good for you guys. But Not obviously, really. Drake May. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're moving Drake, on. Drake May is on the... Okay. Uh, you want to jump over to the next guy? I have, I have DeAndre Hopkins. Um, I think he's, I don't know if, I don't really think it's Will Levis, but DeAndre Hopkins has been, you know, kind of struggling (laughs) in nine targets. He had a great week last week. Two receptions, 21 yards. I know, but like, I don't think he's going to be with this team for more than two more weeks. Uh, so his target share doesn't matter. It's more about his actual production. He's getting old. He was getting old last year. Um, but he's he's 31. I don't know where he ends up next year. It kind of feels like an Allen Robinson on the Rams situation. Maybe an Allen Robinson on the Steelers situation if we're unlucky. Um, what do you think about DeAndre Hopkins? Obviously, all the talent in the world, and he's been amazing over his career. He just can't make the decision to go play with who knows who at quarterback. You know, he he has to go play with somebody. Um, I know. I don't know. I As long as he can be in a situation with a good quarterback, I think he'll be just fine for another few years. Um, yeah, I mean... He's aging, sure. And for that reason, yeah, his value will continue to fall. He's over that 30-year-old kind of cusp, so it just can, his value will continue to go down. So mm-hmm. next time he has a couple big games, <laughs> flip him immediately if he can, but good luck. Yeah, that's my plan right now. I, I 
bought him. I actually did a funny thing like last year. I traded Justin Fields because I didn't want to root for Justin Fields as a Packers fan. And so when Justin Fields was kind of on his way up or, you know, still kind of mid, I got uh, Jared Goff and DeAndre Hopkins. And that helped my playoff push last year. Um, but I think it's time to potentially move on from DeAndre Hopkins. It feels like he's not going to be a viable starter um, next year and, and definitely not the year after that. Yeah, he could be a flex play. Um, maybe a wide receiver too at best, but... I don't know. I, I don't see him returning to that wide receiver one value. Um, no chance. He was there last year, though. He was sick last year. Yeah, for, yeah, he was nasty. Yeah. But can he do it? I don't. I don't know. I guess I could easily be proven wrong. It's just, is the value going to be there for the amount of years that matters in dynasty? I mean, I don't think so. Yeah, probably not. And then, I guess on the same note, is it even worth talking about Derrick Henry? Derrick Henry washed. It's tough with him because also, yeah, he's getting to that age point, but I don't know. It is Derrick Henry. (laughs) It seems like he has some games where he can't fall for the five yard gain that he used to be able to. I don't know. It's, it's weird. What do you think? I'm trying to move him right now for like a second. If I can get a second for him, move on. I'm in a good spot. Um, But yeah, it feels like Henry might not be the guy anymore. Um, I'm not comfortable starting him at like a a running back two spot next year. So I guess we'll have to figure out how that looks. Yeah, not if he's on the Titans. Definitely not. It sounds like he thinks that he's done with the Titans. I sure hope so, because he's a great running back, obviously. In the same breath as him, mm-hmm. Saquon Barkley was my, was my last one. Um, very tough day on the ground. Nine touches for 14 yards. Yeah, I think he'll obviously bounce back. Um I feel like I've been consistently disappointed by Saquon, though. So I don't expect anything more than, like, a running back 12 finish on the year, ever. Um, And he is pretty reliable with delivering that. This past week, though, definitely a tough look and might cost me my season. Um, If A.J. Brown can... I'll do my live A.J. Brown check right now. Same spot. A.J. Brown needs six more points. Um, Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. Saquon worries me because he's kind of... I don't know. He's kind of stuck there. Um, I think he... (laughs) Yeah, he is. I think he kind of screwed himself over, though, by taking that one-year deal. Well, didn't he take a one-year deal? Yeah, he screwed himself over. So isn't he a free agent next year? Yeah, but they can just franchise tag him. Oh. So the, the, the way that this tag. is going to work out is he wanted guaranteed money. I get it. He's an injury-prone guy through the first, I don't know, three or the last three years. So for that reason, I understand go get your guaranteed money. But he could also bet on himself and just play under the tag because they're not going to tag him twice. Mm -hmm. So now he's just absolutely fucked himself over because he's just going to get tagged again this year. That's so sad. And then they're obviously not going to have good quarterback play because they're playing Daniel Jones. They're paying Daniel Jones too much, way more than they should. The Giants are a mess and I guess Saquon is kind of stuck on that ship uh maybe they can get the offense rolling like last year that's the only hope you can get I say we take the bottom 20 percent in the NFL of teams and we just redraft (laughs) (laughs) just shuffle it around because 
couple of the guys we just mentioned is pretty depressing. <laughs> Saquon and Derrick Henry um, and DeAndre yeah. Hopkins. It's sad that these guys are just completely losing their value on crappy teams. It's brutal. I mean, it's something that you hate to see because usually it is talent over situation, but there are a few situations. And one of them is the Giants where you just never recover from that. Yeah, and I think if he played under the cap uh, or uh, under the tag this past year or this season, I think he easily could have still gotten, you know, another two-year, three-year contract from another team, like um, similar to a contract that like David Montgomery got from the Lions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. Dave Montgomery's younger, but I think Saquon obviously has more talent and upside on a on a team like the Dave Lions. Montgomery's younger than Saquon. Oh yeah. Yikes, dude. Uh, no, they're the same age. Been alive too long. They're the same age. Was that the Nick Chubb draft? I think it was. I think so. It's the draft where I made my millions. AJ Brown, Nick Chubb. <laughs> Love that. Um. All right. Got anything else you want to go over before we call it? Um, I think we covered uh just about everybody. Um, we got the DFS episode on Wednesday, so we'll cover that. I uh I actually won some money this weekend, but I will I will update everybody on how stupid I was, um, because I did do something kind of stupid. So stay tuned for that. All right. Yeah, thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, Just a reminder that the content in this episode is for entertainment and informational purposes only and is not intended as definitive betting or fantasy sports advice. Have a good one. Peace.